I think Islam is the most misunderstood religion in the world. Not just by non-Muslims, but by Muslims as well. Many non-Muslims information about Islam is based on what they see on television and in the movies. And many Muslims are born to this religion without anyone really explaining it to them. And unfortunately their actions and their behavior reflects their lack of understanding. And finally you have people who twist the verses of the Quran in order to spread their hate. The end result? is a lot of confused people and a lot of confusion on what Islam really teaches. I get so many emails from viewers asking me why I became Muslim. So instead of answering it via email, I decided to make a video. So for the season finale, I'm going to take a break from my normal comical view of explaining things with the hope of clearing up some of the confusion with this video. I grew up here in America and like most Americans, I knew very little, if anything, about Islam. And the very few Muslims that I did come across they didn't practice. So since their actions were just like everyone else's, I really had no interest in asking what they believed in. You see, I wasn't really raised with any religion, and honestly, I really didn't care much about any of them. Coming from a science background, you have to convince me intellectually if you want me to change my ways. Otherwise, anyone can make up a religion and say it's from God. Each time someone tried to sell me on following their religion, I was given vague answers whenever I asked for evidence. If you want me to give up my desires in this world, then you better come up with something more than this religion is the truth because this book says it's the truth. Prove to me that this book is perfect, just like the creator, and then I'll follow it. Otherwise, if the book even has one error, it proves it's been written or edited by man. So different people from different religions used to knock on my door. And once the discussions got down to evidence, they had no answers. And that wasn't going to fly with me. And then I discovered Islam. And shortly after, I became Muslim. So why Islam? You see, I became Muslim before 9-11, before all this propaganda. Today, if you watch TV long enough, you believe that this religion is a religion of fanatics, where actions are not based on reason or rationality. But that's not true, but rather it's the exact opposite. When I started studying Islam, I found it very comprehensive, very practical. In fact, when it comes to discussing the existence of the Creator, Islam teaches you to think and reflect, to observe the world around you. Because when you start investigating, you realize how complex things are. And through our human experience, we realize that complex things just don't come out of nowhere. If you and I were walking down my street and we saw the complex buildings and the technology within them, you would never believe me if I told you this all came together by itself. You see, even though you don't see the engineers and the builders who put this all together, that doesn't mean that they don't exist. Just the evidence that you see something put behind, you know for sure someone had to build it. Not just that, but you get an idea of the intelligence of the Creator just by checking out His creation. The amazing thing is that all these man-made structures are rather simple when you compare it to something as complex as a living organism, like a fly. If the entire world got together to build something as complex as a fly and then put life into it, they couldn't do it. And that's just a fly. The point is that we don't see order spontaneously arising out of chaos, but rather our human experience tells us that when we see something working by precise mechanisms, that someone had to put it together. And that someone cannot be a human being. Because we know human beings are imperfect and limited, while the creator of all things is perfect and infinite. So therefore he can't be an idol or a cow or even a human being. Because how can a creator who is infinite be killed by his creation? How can he die? He can't. So if the creator of all things is perfect, then his book can only be perfect. So when I started investigating and studying different books, the only book that I came to find perfect, without error, was the Quran. No other book has been memorized cover to cover verse by verse, in order, by millions of people. That itself is amazing. Have you ever tried memorizing a book cover to cover? Now imagine millions of people doing it. It's not even uncommon to find a person as young as 10 years old to do it. And remember, 85% of the Muslims are not even Arab. Now linguistically, there's no book that compares to it. Scientifically, there's so many verses on scientific knowledge in the Quran that I don't have time to explain in this short video. All I can tell you, 1400 years ago, it was impossible for anyone to have this accurate information. Especially when some of these things have just been discovered in this past century. And the Quran challenges man to write a book like it if he is in doubt that this book is actually from the Creator. To prove that this book cannot be written by a human being. So many have tried. All of them have failed. And many of them ended up becoming Muslims. Amazing. Now keep in mind, the meaning of the Quran translated to English is not the Quran. Since the Quran is only in Arabic. Any translation is only a mere attempt to translate it. These days you see people trying to take verses of the Quran, twisting them in order to fool the people. But in reality they're only fooling themselves. Yes, there's going to be people who are going to be like sheep and they won't think. But I've come across many open-minded people that once you come with a valid argument, they'll listen. They'll think. They'll reflect. Which is one of the reasons I made this video. I'm not here to offend anyone, to attack anyone, or to attack any religions. These are just the ideas that I carry and my perception of them. I hope that it makes you think like it makes me think.
So let me give you a breakdown of what Islam is really about. So what does Islam really teach? What do Muslims really believe in? Well, first off, delete everything you've heard in the media because most of it's nonsense. And all those people who try to spread hate by copy and pasting texts out of context, those people have no idea what they're talking about. I'm going to give you a breakdown from a Muslim what we Muslims believe in. Islam teaches that there's only one God and he has no partners. He has the same God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. That we are here to worship our Creator in all our actions, which is the meaning of the word Muslim, one who submits to God. We should pray at a minimum of five times a day, fast the entire month of Ramadan. We give 2.5% of our excess wealth for zakat, which helps the needy. And if possible, we are required to make pilgrimage to Mecca to do Hajj. During that pilgrimage, you'll realize there is no difference between rich and poor as everyone is dressed the same. Islam is also colorblind, so there's no race, color, culture that makes one superior over another. There is no clergy, and there's no one between you and your Creator. As long as your parents don't tell you to do something conflicting with Islam, you must obey them, as it is a great sin not to do so. Women must also be honored and respected. Neighbors should be treated kindly. And even animals have their rights in Islam and should be treated properly. And there's a great reward for those who help the poor, the widows, and the orphans. You see, this life is nothing but a test. And not even Muslims have a free ticket to paradise. Each person will be judged for their intentions and their actions. So it benefits you if you do good and stay away from evil. Now all the stuff I've been talking to you about may sound very different than what you've seen or heard about Muslims. Maybe that's because of the actions of some of the Muslims out there. Some who are just Muslim by name, representing Islam. And if you compare their actions to what Islam really teaches, you'll notice that it has nothing to do with each other. Alhamdulillah, Allah showed me Islam before He showed me the Muslims. If you really want to see what Islam is about, look into what it teaches. Instead of basing your opinion on the actions of those who are misguided and only claim the religion. Sometimes you hear a so-called Muslim leader talking nonsense, but those who are knowledgeable Muslims know that his words have nothing to do with the teachings of Islam. It's just nonsense packaged with the label of Islam on it. That might work for the people who don't think. But for those who do think, they can investigate on their own to see what Islam really teaches. Five to eight million Muslims live right here in the United States. If Islam really taught violence, then ask yourself, where is the violence? For the majority of Muslims, you don't see such actions. And for those who try to promote these thoughts, are those who are trying to take the verses out of context to serve their own purpose. So all that kill all the infidel stuff is nonsense. Because if it was true, how would the Jews and Christians live generation after generation for 1400 years in the Middle East? And they still live in the Middle East. Think about it. Think about it. I did. And that's when I stopped taking the opinions of others and started investigating on my own. And I discovered the greatest gift in life. The gift of Islam. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. I would like to hear your comments and your rating of this video, inshallah. So after the video is complete, make sure you rate and make sure you comment so we can hear your feedback. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.